All right, I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And as you stand, let's read the first 14 verses together, shall we? John chapter 6. Verse 1, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove or test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Shall we, Father, thank you so much for your word, what it has for us, for your Holy Spirit moving among us today. And I, Father, I pray that your words would go forth as you intend, that you would communicate to your people through your word what you would have each of us to know and understand and apply to our lives. And Father, as all this takes place, I pray, Lord, that they would be truly your words, your thoughts, not my own, that I would diminish and you would increase. And Father, may you have your perfect will in all that accomplish, is accomplished today. For we ask it in Jesus' name, for his sake, and with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and please be seated. We are finishing our series, our children's series, that we've been doing the, uh, the month of September. So this will be the last Sunday the kids will be in us, uh, with us all, all the service. And kids then will start up again next week. Uh, but we, we've been talking about uh, things in the Bible that, that are... Uh, not only about kids, but where God has used children in the scripture. And so this is no exception. And if you want a title for this message, I would call it this. What a happy meal. <laughs> what a happy meal. Now, you know what happy meals are, right? They're meals for children at some place, mix something <laughs> down the street. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a smaller meal. It's, it's uh, for, for adults, we would probably want two or some, some of you might want three or, or more of those. It's like one hamburger, a small fry, and a, a small drink. And, and the most important thing, there's a toy in each one. That, but uh, but, but this, this is kind of a, a happy meal in, in a different sense. It's a, it's a child who uses their happy meal to feed thousands of people. And so we just want to go through this a little bit, and, and this is a very familiar story. In fact, it's the only miracle that takes place in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Very, very unusual, because John is kind of separate from the other three. The other three uh, are pretty much this, a similar story uh, from three different points of view, and John is kind of off uh, by himself, but this one miracle takes place in all four Gospels. But the first thing we see here is that the need was presented. We don't see it as clearly in John chapter 6 as we do in Matthew chapter 14, where we see, and it was evening, and his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves 
victuals. That's what the, the disciples said to the Lord. They saw the people, they saw the people were hungry, and I have no doubt, although it doesn't say this, that they were hungry too, and I think that was part of the motivation. You know, send them away so they can get something, some food. And I think if the folks went away to buy victuals, or uh, as they used to say in Southern Galilee, vittles, <laughs> then, then everybody else, the, the disciples, could go get some food as well, right? So they saw the need. I think it was apparent. All these people following Jesus for a long way, and they were tired, they were hungry. And, and so the need was presented, and the disciples put it to the Lord. Why don't you do something about this? Why don't you send them away so they can go get some food? Send them down to McDonald's or, or Burger King, whatever they had in the nearest town. Now, I know I'm being a little facetious, but I, I wonder where all those people would have gone to get food. Because they traveled for a long way, unless they knew somebody in town, it probably would have been hard to go somewhere and, and get something. But, uh, but he, they, they put it on him, said, Lord, I want you to do something. And that is how we are, isn't it? When we see a need, whether it's for us or someone else, I mean, it's called prayer. There's nothing wrong with going to the Lord in prayer and saying, Lord, would you do something for this person over here? Would you do something for that person over there? Lord, would you do something for me over here? There's nothing wrong with that, is there? But sometimes when we see a need and we have a burden for that, and I believe they had a burden for these folks too. I think they cared about the, everybody getting something to eat too. But they wanted him to do something about it. But there are times when the Lord puts it right back on us. And that's what we see uh, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 16, the very next verse from the one I just read. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart, give ye them to eat. Okay, there's 12 disciples. There's 5,000 men. And uh, in that culture at that time, that's who they counted. But I have no doubt there were women and children there as well. Now, many scholars have said that the number was probably closer to 20,000 than 5,000. Twelve guys up here gathered around Jesus. All 12 of them would fit easily on this platform where I am with Jesus. But 20,000 people, imagine that. He says, you guys give them something to eat. Well, why in the world would he do that? Where's it going to come from? They would have a hard enough time going into town and finding some place to, to go eat, let alone from these 12 guys up here who didn't come prepared to feed themselves, let alone 20,000 people. But he said, he, he said, you guys take care of it. Now, there are times, I think, when we see a need or a burden, and we want the Lord to do something about it, but he puts it right back on us and says, you do something about it. I related this same same. Uh, stuff to the young at hearts on Thursday morning. It's, it was interesting that this came up because we're going through uh, Matthew and we just happened to be in this chapter this week. This message has been planned for a long time. I didn't realize it would come down the same week, but the Lord was in it. But <clears throat> what I told them on Thursday was there have been several instances here in the church or throughout the course of my ministry when folks would come to, to me and say, listen, you know, we have a need over here or we have a need over here. Why don't you do something about it, Pastor? And I, I, I said, I, where I, maybe I didn't say everything I thought, but I'm thinking that never occurred to me. Uh, I, I also have to confess I don't really have that burden that you have. And I know our resources here at church are stretched thin, as they are in every church. <clears throat> but maybe you should pray about leading that ministry. Because the Lord laid it on your heart, he didn't lay it on my heart. And that's why some of the ministries that we have here are going now. I'm thinking of Celebrate Recovery. I'm thinking of the food pantry. Uh, we've had other ministries in the past that are the same, are the same way. Someone came to, to me, and in some cases it was not me, it was the previous pastors that I served as associate pastor with, and they came to that pastor, those pastors, and said, hey, listen, we've got a hole here. There's a group of people in this, in this niche we're not reaching. Can we do something about reaching them? 
And it was obvious the Lord had given them that burden. And so they brought it to the pastor, and the pastor said, well, why don't you pray about it? Because the Lord laid it on your heart. He wants you to do it. That's what he's doing here. These disciples said, hey, there's a need here that's not being met. These folks are hungry. Can you send them away so they can get that need met? And he says, you meet the need. Now they're thinking, we don't have the resources to meet that need. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources. We don't have the transportation ability. We, we can't distribute this food. How are we going to do this? Now, <clears throat> these are adults, right? These are men. These are grown men, fishermen. A uh, tax collector, uh, a doctor. These, these, are, these are all grown men with families and jobs and everything that goes on with being an adult. But then there's a, there's a little boy. We're not told how old he is. He's called a lad, which could mean just any, any age, really, but a child. He overhears this conversation, and he immediately volunteers his lunch. His mom who was probably among the crowd there, had, had uh, been resourceful enough to, to give him a lunch, a bag lunch. He had five loaves, and we're talking about loaves. We're not talking about big loaves of bread like you'd buy down at the store with it's cut into, I don't know how many slices are in a loaf of bread, 20 slices or something. It wasn't that way. What, what they were talking about was pita bread, like you'd have a gyro or something. There were five gyro breads, like, like you'd have a gyro in, and two fishes. Now, if you go to some restaurants, I know like Mexican restaurants, like uh, the one I like to go to up here, Fiesta Jalisco, if you order the, the fish dinner, they'll, they'll bring you the, the big plate, and the, the fish will be laying right on the plate, and it's complete. I mean, the head, the tail, the fins, the scales, everything's on the plate. They, they roast it and they, they put it on the plate. Then what you do is you take your fork and you, you pick the meat off of it and they give you tortillas and you put the meat from the fish in the tortilla and you eat it that way. That's what we're talking about. So it wasn't like uh, you take the fish and you put it in the pita bread and you eat it and, and okay, she gave him five pita breads but only two fishes. He's going to just eat three empty pita. No, that's not what, how it worked. You pick the meat off the fish, you put it in the Pete, and you make a fish taco, essentially, is what it is, or a fish gyro. I don't know why I'm talking about that, but I'm not making myself hungry. That doesn't sound appealing to me. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but that's what he has for his lunch. It's not a lot of food, but that's what he has. He knows that he doesn't have, well, he, I don't think that little boy knew he had the resources to feed everybody in the crowd. He's thinking, this is what my mom gave me for myself for lunch today. But I'm willing to give it if somebody else could use it. That's the faith of a child. That's the faith by which we come to the Lord. That's the faith by which we get into heaven. And I've often said that, that salvation is so simple that only a child can do it. Because we adults, it's harder for adults to put aside everything we've been taught all our lives to trust the Lord simply with the faith of a child. But that's how we have to come to him. Simply trusting. And that's what this little boy did. He said, I don't have much. It's enough for me. But I'm willing to give it to you, Lord, if you can use it. That's the fantastic part of this story. I think that's the greatest part of the story. I think it's better than the miracle that it takes place in just a few minutes. But he, he volunteered his lunch. And I think when it comes to the Lord, it doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. If we give it to the Lord, he can use it. He can multiply it. And often when we have the offering here, for example, we'll ask the Lord to multiply it and use it to further the ministry of this church locally into our community and through our missionaries around the world. But he can multiply that, just like he can take your income. And after you've given to the Lord what he has asked you to give him, commanded actually, the tithe, which is 10%, and then offerings above the tithe, he commands us to do that, not because he needs our money. It all, it's all his anyway. He gave it to us. He, he actually lent it to us, and he get, expects back a portion of it 
so that we are tangibly recognizing that it came from him. And also so we can trust him to meet our needs with what's left over. And so what he does with this lunch, he does in a small way with us every time we give to the Lord. He takes our 90% or less, however much you give above your tithe. He takes that 90% and he extends it and stretches it out, not just to meet the original 100%, but beyond that. And many of you have given testimonies, and I could as well, uh, of how God has met your needs and beyond even after you've given to him sacrificially. Uh, uh, there have been several times here in the last few weeks, actually, where I've, um, I've just, above the tithe, taken all the cash out of my pocket and put it in the offering. And uh, before I left church that day, the Lord had replaced it and more. Just in the last <clears throat> three, four weeks. And, and I'm thinking, you know, why don't I share this more often? <laughs> I, sh I should talk about this because a lot of folks are missing out on the blessings of God because they're not trusting God with what they have. This little boy did. He said, listen, I don't have much. I know I don't have enough to feed everybody, but I'll give what I've got. And so he gives it to the Lord. And the Lord says, okay, now we've got something to work with. You know, some people have more than others. Remember the parable of the, some, uh, of the servants? The Lord gave one servant ten talents, another one got five talents, another one got one talent. Didn't matter how much they got or how much they didn't have, they just gave it back. That's what he wanted them to do. That's what this little boy did. He gave back what he had. And the Lord says, okay, fellas, let's organize this. Make the men sit down. In another place, we see that they're, they're seated in fifties, groups of fifty. So the miracle is about to happen. The Lord takes the, the, the bread in his hands, and he holds it up and he breaks it, tears it, essentially, these, the pita bread, and the fishes breaks them and he gives them to his 12 disciples. And so what you see here is that there are 12 disciples, there's 20,000 people, 20,000 divided by 12 is what? About 1,500, a little bit more than 1,500 per disciple, right? So each disciple, was supposed to feed 1,500, 1,600 people with the amount that he was given by the Lord. So the Lord breaks these five loaves and he, he, he gives it to this disciple and he gives him uh, two pallet loads worth of pita bread. And then he breaks the fish up and he gives it to this disciple and he gives him two pallets worth of fish, right? And then the next disciple, he gives him two pallet loads of fish and two pallet loads of pita bread. And are you, are, you, are you listening to me? Okay. That's not how he did it, is it? He didn't give them a bunch, just stacks and stacks. He didn't give them many, many baskets full of food to distribute. He gave them each, well, five pita breads divided among 12 disciples. I don't know half a little more than, less, less than half a pita bread per disciple, right? And a little piece of fish. That's what each disciple had. He says, okay, go out and distribute among the people. Now you're going to see the miracle. Now it's not delineated here word for word, but the, but the miracle took place as the disciples distributed the food to each person. They would go down here and, and Robin, here's a piece of pita bread, okay? And, and then Tony, here's a piece of pita bread. And Sandra, here's a piece of pita bread. And Lucy, here's a piece of pita bread. And, and Rose, here's a piece of pita bread. And Bill, here's a piece of pita bread. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and, and Julio and Valentina and Holly, and go all the way through the whole congregation. Give everybody a piece of pita bread. And then keep going. Thousands of people. And the disciples didn't realize that you know, they're handing this out, but they're still... Plenty in their hands. Maybe the same amount in their hands as they're distributing this food. And so everybody eats until they are full. Remember, this is a little boy's happy meal. It was enough for one little boy for lunch. But all the adults, including men, who tend to eat, can I say it, guys? A lot. <laughs> they were full. And then the, the, the Lord had them take up the fragments that nothing would be lost, which is another story for another time. Doesn't fit the story here, but, but he just wanted them to pick up the fragments. And they gathered up 12 baskets full of just the leftover pieces. 
Now, this little boy, I'm sure, wasn't carrying a basket of food when he came. It was probably wrapped up in a napkin. But they picked up all that. And then the story goes on. It, it, it kind of leaves it there. Uh, in, in, uh, it doesn't say anything about the, the, the disciples' reaction to this miracle. It does say that the men who were there, the people who received the food, they were amazed. They realized what had happened. They saw all the food being distributed from one little lunch. And they said, this is the prophet who should come into the world. They recognized he was no ordinary man. Now, later on, we read a story in Mark chapter 8. Beginning of verse 14. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread or food, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. They're on the Sea of Galilee with the Lord. They only had one loaf of bread, and he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It's because we have no bread, no food. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye because ye have no bread or food? Don't you understand yet? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? And having ears, hear ye not? And do ye not remember? What he's saying is, aren't you paying attention to what's going on around you? Don't you see the amazing things that God is doing? And he was God. Aren't you seeing what God is working in your life and in the lives of people around you? Are you paying attention? Are you being perceptive? Are you being discerning of all the things that are going on around you? Obviously, they hadn't. So he points out one particular illustration, verse 19. When I break the five loaves among 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? They said to him, 12. And when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? And they said, seven. And he said unto them, how is it that you do not understand? And I look at that, and I look at that, and for years I looked at that, and I said, how in the world did they miss that miracle? How could they miss that? They didn't have food among 12 of them to feed 20,000 people. One little boy brings his lunch, they pass it out to everybody, and it didn't hit them. Somehow they missed it. And then I look at myself, and I'm thinking, how many times, as I look back over my life, how many times have I missed God's miracles myself until it was pointed out to me later by somebody else? They missed it. The miracle took place in their hands. You know, when you give God what you have, and sometimes all you have is who you are, and just give yourself to God and say, Lord, I don't have any ability except availability, but I'm going to give it to you. If you can do anything with me, if you can make anything of me, if you can do anything through me, if you can bless others through me, or if I can have any impact spiritually in anyone's life at any time ever, please do so through me. Just make yourself available, and God will do miracles through you. But then we have to watch for them, because it's so easy to miss. Now, some of it, I think, is, I'm going to say intentional. Sometimes the Lord does not want us to see what he does through us. Because sometimes we take credit for things that God does. And we have a tendency to, to, for our heads to expand. I think there are things that God does in our lives and through us that he will not allow us to see until we get to heaven. But I've asked the Lord to show me things just enough to keep me encouraged and to keep me motivated and to keep me passionate about his work and about his ministry. Some of you have probably never experienced that because perhaps you've not made yourself available. Perhaps you've just not given your lunch and put it on the altar as Harley sang about just a little bit ago and just given it to God and let him do what he can do with it. There wasn't much that little boy could have done with his lunch. 
There wasn't much the disciples could have done with that lunch, but the Lord can do amazing things with what we give Him. How many times have I heard people say, I just don't have the ability to do that thing that you're asking me to do, or you're asking me to pray about doing. Boy, I'd like to get involved in music ministry, but I, I, I can't do this. I can't, I'd love to get involved in a teaching ministry, but I can't do that. And uh, I'd, I'd love to do something to serve the Lord, but I don't think I have anything to offer. <laughs> don't let that stop you. Just be available. Just be available. Just say, Lord, I don't have much, but I'm going to give you what I've got. You do what you can with it. The Lord loves challenges like that. That's where he loves to do miraculous things. Little is much when God is in it. These disciples were, were close to the Lord, but sometimes they saw him, they listened to him, they watched him so much doing this and that and the other thing that they got maybe callous to what he was doing. It wasn't new and fresh anymore. He had to point it out to them. Don't you remember what happened? How many baskets did you take up? Twelve. Okay. How many lunches did we get? How many loaves did we get? How many fishes to get, did we get? One lunch, five loaves, two fishes. How many baskets full? Don't you get it? That's how thick I would be. I would have been right there with these guys. It would have had to have been pointed out to me. And with my math inability, somebody would have had to write it down for me and explain it to me. But we need to be watching for what God does around us and through us. And all we have to do is just be available and give him what we've got. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. We're here every week. We hear messages like this every week. We read scripture every week. We pray every week. We're around other Christians every week. Does it get too old to us where it's not fresh anymore? Where it's not miraculous anymore? Do you remember when you first got saved years and years ago? For me, it was years and years and years and years ago. I remember how excited I was when I first became a Christian. How enthusiastic and bubbly and effervescent I was about being a Christian. And everything was new and everything was, was miraculous. You know, you get to the point where it's not so amazing, this grace we talk about anymore, is it? We need to ask God, can you give me a little bit of that bubbliness back? Can you help me to see once again how miraculous, how amazing grace is? And help me to share that amazing grace with other people around me. I don't know what to say. I don't have much to give. But Father, I'll give you what I've got. I'll just be here. Use me. Use what I have. Whatever. It's all yours. And just multiply it. Multiply it however you can. Let's just do that today. Father, thank you so much for what you have done in our lives. For what you will do in our lives in the future. Father, today, right now, these next few minutes, I pray, Lord, that you would do in our lives and through us what only you can do as we lay ourselves down on the altar, as we make ourselves available and just say, Lord, here's what I've got. You use it. Help it to be a blessing to other people around me, however you can bless them. And Father, may I also receive a blessing as well. We know this little boy was blessed beyond measure because of the way you used his lunch. We thank you for recording that story for us and preserving it these many thousands of years so that we can learn something from it today and apply it to our lives. May your will be done in our lives these next few minutes as our actions honor and glorify you. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, for his sake, with thanksgiving. Amen. You come as we sing. as the.